Yeah, Sandeep, you may have caught a bit of what Akshay said, and Akshay seemingly suggesting that, you know, you need to wake up and, and, and recognize the kind of challenge that you are now facing. Do you believe that there is that recognition, there is an understanding within policy makers as to the extent of challenges that face us if we don't, re if we don't respond to climate change effectively with policy interventions? Is that there? Is there, is, is there realization there that we are already in a climate emergency? Uh, there is a social recognition. I work on the ground and I see communities who are impacted, uh, Rajdeep. Uh, whether it's workers, whether it's agricultural workers, whether it's fisher folk, whether it's nomadic pastoralists, whether it's the entire working classes of India. So there is a huge social recognition that things are not what they used to be, and not just the debate that you were framing in nature versus livelihood. The tipping point has become lives versus livelihood. So it's almost uh, the question of lives versus livelihood. So there's a social recognition, but sadly, a policy system, policy making, establishment lags behind it uh, and lags behind it substantially. So I, I think that that goes to the debate on democratic policy making and inclusive and participatory policy making. Quite a separate chapter, but you had uh, you had Dr. Madhav Gartgill and Gartgill report, if you remember, in 2011 was dismissed as being too environmentally friendly and not in tune with ground realities. And I think, sadly, uh, we have come to a time where, where, where you know, this debate is really live. It's extreme weather events uh, were talked of, the intensity and frequency by Sunita ji, but it's clearly a man-made situation. Uh, we, we, we know what is happening. Are we prepared for it? Have we prepared for it? We know, for instance, this is not a sudden pattern. We know that mm -hmm. in any case, we always knew that much of India's rainfall happens in a three-month period. Uh, and, and we know that this has shifted, and we know those patterns. We know the intensity has shifted. So what has been our preparedness to it, whether it's uh, towns or whether it's the countryside. So the fate of both towns and uh, what is called the urban, uh, the urban areas and the rural areas inter intertwined in, in this uh, kind of a situation. So I think we need to recognize that and to say to sort of let off the hook, uh, design, planning, preparedness systems, adaptation systems, climate mitigation systems. We are quite, quite away from bringing that into policy making let me bring a uh, let me bring a small fact here uh, dr gardgill spoke about in the brief video he spoke about uh, the differential impact impact of climate change and these changing patterns on uh, different segments of society he was talking of in this case almost the bonded conditions of tea, tea estate and tea plantation workers so we know there is differential impact we know that they are pushed into untenable situations, untenable living situations, untenable habitats, fragile habitats, whether it's the mm -hmm. plantation sites of uh, Kerala that we're talking of or the Western Ghats, or whether it's the cities where they are pushed into absolutely untenable, you know, sort of water bodies or next to the rivers. We've seen that all across or in landslide prone areas in the mountain cities of India and in, in those areas. So we know that the impact is going to be differential, much high on their lives, on their habitats, on their livelihoods, on their incomes, but also on their expenditures. Mm -hmm. And the pathway to come out of the, such torture is extremely tenuous for them. And what are we doing? To, what is the sort of policy recognition on that? For long, activists working on the ground have been asking for loss and damage compensation mechanism for, for, uh, for, uh, for livelihoods, but as well as for habitats. And we see, what do we see instead? A whole range, a growing populace of what is called climate migrants. So, but the policy hasn't responded. The policy making establishment hasn't responded. Sandeep Chachra, you have a solution. Where would you start? If, if you uh, were asked, give me a solution to this climate change emergency, where would you start, Mr. Chachra? I would start with framing the entire climate emergency, climate debate or uh, what we have this discussion in a justice framework. So it is in reality, as Sunita ji was also referring to, the question of climate justice, uh, of differential responsibilities and differential sort of suffering. So I think it's very important, and mm -hmm. in order to also create social pressure, uh, it's very important to frame the debate in a historically and contemporary correct manner, a class debate a debate of what is called climate justice. So I think first thing first, I think the role of the state uh, and therefore the role of public investment, whether it's in building urban commons, rural commons, a policy on commons is fundamental. 
the role of the welfare state in public investments in cities in in the countryside to build on to adaptation so that people can adapt and to build into solutions the resilient solutions or the what is called the climate resilient solutions whether it's to do with agriculture whether it's to do with how our cities today are essentially gray infrastructures and hell holes in in many many ways as you mm -hmm. can see so the role of public investment and therefore of the state oversight and the state responsibility and therefore of the ownership of the state responsibility in compensating people who are suffering on account of no fault of theirs and these are popular classes of india and the numbers are huge so compensating protecting ensuring future livelihoods ensuring their habitats or, or relocated mm -hmm. habitats that uh, rajdeep you referred to in some cases from very ecologically but fragile areas really and then thirdly and quickly the check and regulation on private reality developers in cities or private random private development with commercial totally commercial interest totally ramping over people uh, the planet itself so i think that needs to be regulated the strong arm of the state needs to focus there and i think that's been a weak spot across you see it in cities you see it in uh, you're talking of western ghats dr gargil was speaking to it sunita ji was speaking to it exactly that tourism highways unchecked kind of roads for promoting tourists at the cost of people who live there the tribals who live there so i think these are some of the pathways we need to build together uh, and i finally i want to conclude on this particular point by saying that this uh, unleashes a public pressure uh, uh, therefore the the need to have a public discourse and you know this d debates like this but many more but i think a public pressure mm. and 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 a building of public discourse which is fomenting on the ground is fundamental to resolve issues in a democratic accountable manner in the framework framework of rights and justice so that's how i would like right. to sort of approach the solutions yeah